well and also gold sometimes people give gold now you have to be very careful because um, see my brother Hafiz Mujahid when he got married he gave 5,000 pounds to his wife as mahar and then there was khabin involved and which wasn't a part of the mahar and there was also three grand worth of gold which was a gift okay which was a gift so his mahar was 5,000 pounds and then the khabin and the and the, uh, the gold was surplus to the mahar okay they were gifts in my marriage, my um, I, I was a PhD student then, I didn't have a lot of money. So my um, in-laws were actually quite um, compassionate on me. And they basically said, well, the mahar is going to be £5,000, well, £5,000 worth, but you have to give £3,000 in, uh, £2, in cash and £3,000 um, in, in gold. So we've already given £3,000 in gold, but um, I've still got to give her £2,000 in cash. So that's all together, the gold and the money made 5,000, that was the mahar. Whereas in my brother's case, it was the 5,000 pounds which were the mahar and the gold was surplus. So that's something which parents and yourself, you need to negotiate how that works. Every single family will probably have something different. Okay, so is, there is no one answer for that. Yep. Does that make sense? Yeah. Okay. How long do we have till the next break? 20 minutes? Okay, I'm going to very whiz through this. Um, when, when does the mahar become necessary? Um, I'm not going to discuss this because this is normally dealing with um, divorce. Okay, so I mean, you can have a look at this in, in, in the spare time. Uh, in, in, in the lunch time and then you can if you don't understand what this is then you can ask me okay I guess everybody's gonna ask what it means okay but let's not discuss this because this is more related to divorce okay we'll move on we come to the next stage which is called tying the knot or wearing the noose does anybody know why I call this tying the knot or wearing the noose yeah so in, in, a, in, a, in a wedding okay you can have the ring, you can either wear the ring on your fingers or you can wear the ring on your nose. Depends even where you want to work. You, know, you can either, the, the wedding, the marriage can be tied a knot for you, literally, or it can be a noose for you around your neck. So it depends how you want to take it. So, um, yeah. The role and traditions, uh, tra a role of tradition and <coughs> customs in Islam. Um, Islam does not go against tradition or customs. You have to believe that Islam does not just come in a vacuum. Islam comes in a social context. And different social contexts will have different costumes. For example, uh, women uh, wearing um, earrings or something like that. Sorry, it can't be an earring, nose ring, if it's going to be on the nose. Okay. People, uh, women wearing nose stud is something which is very accepted in, in, in the Indian subcontinent. Okay. But women wearing nose studs in, in the in the Arabian Peninsula, in the Near East and in the Middle East, it's seen as something which is haram. Some people, they say, oh, that's context. Okay, context is having, having an effect. So what you have to understand <coughs> is that the role uh, Islam, is, is, um, the roles and traditions of customs in Islam, is, as long as these traditions and customs are not violating any Shari'i rulings, okay, as long as this custom, for example, the, the whole incident of Mendi, if women together, they want to get together and they want to have a Mendi party without any m music, they can have dancing, um, only women's environment, there's no men allowed, it's secluded, and you know, um, you know, they can have some songs you know, where they sing, wedding songs or whatever, um, have some Mendi. That's a, that's a concept which is not an Islamic concept, but it doesn't violate the Sharia. Because the Prophet Sallallahu says in the Hadith that you know the, 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 the Medinan women, they like daf and, and they like you know, um, you know, singing and dancing whilst they, Prophet Sallallahu praises that. He says, Medinan women are very relaxed. I like that, they like singing and dancing. So, now. There are all Bengali women who have been to the, they take the men up, but they have Hollywood songs and all that. No, but so this is what I'm saying. T understand what I'm saying, that as long as it doesn't violate the laws of the Sharia, basically this is not, this is not for those people who are already doing it, because if they're already doing it, this is not a license for those. Yeah. 
because they don't give two hoots about your fatwa. Yeah. If they're already doing with the Bollywood and they'll kick the man out, or some, some of them they'll have men, they don't give two hoots about your fatwa. They're already doing it. But this is for those brothers or sisters who would like to do it, but they're scared that are we violating the Sharia? They're, in Islam, there's nothing wrong with it. Providing that they don't violate any of it. Providing that it's not so, um, you know, it's, it's not so extortionate that you spend so much money on it. You know, people in the men, they, they do spend so much money. It's like a whole wedding in itself, right? Within the bounds of Sharia, if they just, if the women or the men, to, you know, not together, I mean, separately, and they, they want to just get together and have some fun, um, that's nothing wrong with it. Well, I'm, I'm, this is what I'm saying, that you shouldn't have the music. Okay. If they want to sing something vocally, yeah. okay, and that's fine. Okay. So, I mean, by in one in one instance, you should understand when I say that it doesn't contravene or violates the hukum of the Sharia, that just rounds it up. Yeah. Okay, and like I said, this is not a, a, a fatwa for those women or men who are already doing their Bollywood and their balle balle, whatever, right? Because they won't give two hoots of your fatwa. It's about those women who really want to do it because it's 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 uh, something nice, but they're scared. Does the religion allow this or not? Okay, and we've got precedence of that from the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam life. Um, so as long as this tradition and customs does not kind of um, violate the Sharia rules, then there's nothing wrong with this. Something which is very, very, um, which the disease in our community and is called the jahez. The jahez can be translated as the dawi. This is where the the husband's, uh, the groom's father demands from the um, wife's father, the bride's father, that you need to give me a whole sofa set and you need to give me um, a fridge and you need to give me a car and you need to furnish my house. You know, if not, then it's going to be really, really. Um, I mean, I find fight, fought against the grain with my family on that. Um, so. Um, it's something I know that is very, very hard. It's very, very hard, and it's it's very easy just to say theoretically, but we we, we still have to make the effort. Um, it basically imposes a lot of things on on people. Maybe somewhere in India or or in England, some kind of rich shot um, had uh, you know had his son um, you know uh, had his you know daughter's marriage and had and another rich son got his son married, and they give gifts. You know, so the so the um, the bride's father was so rich, she was able to give gifts to the um, the groom's father or the or the groom's family, and from there maybe this tradition, um, you know, it it, it kind of um, started. If the bride's father sincerely, if they do want to give a gift to their daughter, then that's fine. There's nothing wrong with it. But if it's imposed on them to the to the extent that it's going to put them in a financial crisis and they need to bring a loan and things like that. And that's haram, and you need to fight against the greed. Okay, as as far as possible. Maybe maybe these things are very very hard because they're rooted in our kind of blood system. Maybe it's really really hard to um, get over these things, um, but we should try. I mean, just one moment. Um, this sister, she basically said that, oh, I don't know why my father is taking a twenty thousand pound loan out. Right, he's taking a twenty thousand pound loan out in my nikah. I could do a nikah with few dates and things like that. But you have to understand where they're coming from as well. They have been conditioned. You know, you know, if they don't do that, then they have to live in that society. So they have been conditioned to do that. So maybe you have to come into some kind of negotiation, and you have to have the intention that inshallah, when it comes to our children's age, then we will not have that. So they are products of their time. We are products of our time. Now, you had a, you had a question. Yes, yeah, so it, it, it's the optional then. Sorry. Dowry as the jihaz. Yeah. Dowry as the jihaz. If somebody wants to give it without any kind of um, imposing on him and without any kind of, you know, like they have to give it or without any kind of social pressure, it's fine. Uh, you can't impose it. You know, but I mean, the, this is something which is, which is more of a, a societal kind of thing. You know, it's, it's conditioned in our society. For example, if I was to uh, not to have anything, right? If I was not to have anything, then you know people are going to come, and they are going to tell my parents that okay, we want to see where you got your um, bahu from, and what did they give, and when they say oh they haven't given anything, and people did say to my parents they haven't given anything, so it's embarrassing for them, because it's going against the culture, it's going against the norm. You know they'd rather die rather than the izzat. 
So these things, you know, you don't go all vendetta and all vigilante on them and say, no, I wanted the proper 